And uh, in the same perspective, Mr. Ikane, you know, uh, mm. yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll still bring this con uh, question uh, which has uh, something to do with actually international relations. And uh, I will be happy if you as an expert will bring more clarification on this. You, do, you know, we are looking at how the world is functioning now. I still want to capitalize on the words which you earlier said. If you don't have the power, then you, your voice is not heard. Be it economic power, be it uh, political, uh, and uh, uh, you can name the rest. My question is, given the way the things are unfolding in the world, and of course the quest by these superpowers to maintain uh, their position in the world to be in control, and now, do you think uh, they can go an extra mile to instigate violence or some unfavorable conditions in countries that are actually uh, wanting uh, to, to have that independence? We want to take Africa as a case study because uh, it's primarily concerns us, you know. So now, do you think in wanting to maintain these prowess in every aspect, these countries can uh, uh, try to uh, bring about a fragmentation of states. And if, yes, now we are conversant, how can our stakeholders, be it political stakeholders and other stakeholders across the continent, how can we address this as a continent? You know, you said it. The essence of the talk is to see changes coming so that uh, the future generation should not be entrapped in what we are facing today. So with all of these, uh, uh, the, the, the hidden uh, aspects of diplomacy and how things are ongoing in the world, the quest to be in control, how can we as a continent address this? Oh, thank you once more. Um, um, the, fragmenta the fragmentation of the African continent and African countries has been in the core, in the core of the of um, of the Western uh, uh, politics in the, to control Africa. Okay. Uh, the wars we experience in Africa today, the 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 the, the interstate wars and intrastate wars, the, the tribalism we experience in Africa today, um, the, 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 the worn out practices we experience today, the, the religious uh, conflicts we experience today are, are things that are, have been carefully, those are, those are colonial inheritances. Those are colonial inheritances. And um, it's sad enough that we sometimes sometimes have not taken stock of our history because um, we are victims of these things today because uh, I think the African people um, have not been very well steeped in their historical conscience. Yeah. You know, they are not well steeped in their historical conscience. And that's why I said there's been, there's been generations of Africans there's been the generations of the Nkrumahs and the Mandela's and, 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 and the Nyerere's yeah. who, who beyond the, 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 the kind of leadership, the kind of leadership they, they, they engaged in was a, leader, was, was a conscientious leadership. Sure. That for Africa to move forward, they had to take stock of their history. They had to talk about slavery. They had to talk about colonization. Mm -hmm. Then came the, the, then came the new governing African, the, the new African governing class, the one after independence, put in place, put in place by uh, these Western states, and for most of these countries, the, the, is still the regimes of, of the of the pre and post independence uh, Africa that are still in power today. For some, it's been a transition from father to son. Those are the realities of our continent today. And uh, we are victims. We are victims of a past that sometimes we did not create. And it is sad enough that we are, we've refused consciously or unconsciously to learn 
uh, to learn about our history. And the people without a, his a historical conscience are people who cannot engage the, their future, who cannot unlock their promises. Now, how do we, how do we engage the world, which today has all the mechanics, all the methods to coerce a poor and ridden, a, 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 a continent ridden of poverty, of poverty and all the, the other aspects you could think of. It would be, it, it's two things. The first are the people. The first are the people. We need to make and do, a, in, a, go through an, a total and a complete mental overhauling. We need to, and when we've succeeded to go through a complete mental overhauling, when we've, come, when we've been able to take stock of our past, when we've been able to embrace um, uh, 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 the, 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 bitter, the, the bitter and the bitter pictures of our common uh, story, then we can start appending solutions to the people we want to become. Then we can start uh, building institutions that reflect our past and our, our present and the, and, and the future we want to engage. When you take a stage as the African Union, the African Union is, is the stage par excellence of African diplomacy. It is the, is it, it is the, the, uh, the foreground of African diplomacy. If in such, if such an institution, if such an institution can, can, uh, has, does not have a story of an African funding and there is a problem. It is no secret to anyone that the, the building in, in Addis Ababa was highly a gift from China. It is no secret to anyone that the funding, the funding of the African Union is primarily from the EU. When you don't have that kind of independence, how do you, how are you, how, how do you think you're able to project your voice on the global stage? The it is no secret. It is no secret yeah. for any to anyone that the discussions of in the EU, the discussions in the EU are sometimes done in the presence of Western leaders. I mean the discussion in the EU. It is it is it is highly disturbing. So you cannot we cannot we cannot start talking of becoming a counterforce to these Western powers, which have the money which have the power, they have the economic power, they have the military power. It is not possible. Do so you think is... we can start being the counter force in, uh, by redefining our ideologies or bringing into play the ideologies of, of the uh, forefathers of uh, Pan-Africanism, which you mentioned earlier on, mm -hmm. like you, you be intentional about taking a milestone towards mm -hmm. attaining an objective? Yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's possible because we have all that it takes sure. to turn the wheel around. We have the resources, we have the buoyant youth, we have the population, we have the demography. We have it. We have all of it. Now, um, we, we, we're, we've been so focused on the African elite and the African polit politician. We cannot, the, the, the problem of Africa is us, is a civil society. Is the educational is the is the is the is the educational curriculum that we serve our children? Is the is the refusal of accountability? Is the silencing of dissent? It's all of us involved. So each time the problem of the African is not just the African politician. It's all of us. Sure. And when 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 a, when a crisis is happening in Mali and you think it's Mali's problem. When a coup d'etat is happening in Burkina Faso and you think it's, a, it's the people of Burkina Faso that have to deal with your issue, then there is a problem. When you well, well we well know that the Western, um, the Western world considers Africa as one grouping. So it is, we have all it takes. We have all it takes to turn the wheel around. And, and why is it possible? It's possible because uh, uh, 20 years ago, we gave, uh, grants and funds to Dubai. We offered aids to 
uh, North Korea to South Korea to China 30 years ago, not just in the recent past. Yeah. Governments, governments of Africa offered loans to this country. It, 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 we, we, today, they are multi-billionaires and they are engaging the world with a certain arrogance. So why is it not possible for Africa? Because they develop a certain, a certain mentality. You see China today, the Confucius, they're using their language today to export. They're exporting China. You see uh, Qatar uses the World Cup to export uh, 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 Qatar. And why would I tell you this? Why, why is it possible? 2010, 2010, one of the best World Cups ever organized in the world was the World Cup in South Africa. It was the World They don't say it enough, but it was one of the best World Cup. But before the World Cup, doom was promised. Everyone said, oh, we're going to die of malaria, we're going to die of mosquitoes in, in South Africa. But then it was a magnificent World Cup, which means when Africa, if each time Africa wants to join the global banquet intentionally, we do it with style, because we have the people, we're just, we are happy people. Absolutely. We are uh, a welcoming, we have all it takes. So it is possible, but it's, it only, it's only going to be possible if we start reforming our mentalities. We start changing, we start accepting accountabilities. We start accepting the way business is done. We start saying, we start telling our leaders that you could decriminalize, you could uh, criminalize homosexuality without necessarily killing your people or, or submitting them to death sentence. So it is possible.